Welcome to my video on repairing. These are the tools we'll need to do it. You need a little bit of of um, sanding paper or a pot scrubber, a Q-tip, sharp knife, a Phillips screwdriver, a permanent marker, some cloth, drying cloth. And, um, these are one of my favorite aquarium fish feeders. I've got a few marine tanks and they are just awesome. But every once in a while I'm a bit clumsy and I um, drop one in the water. The little hinges that attach these guys to the tank aren't really engineered to be the best in the world. They do work there. So <clears throat> let me show you how to repair it and um, get it working again. So, first of all, we'll just remove all the bits. You can see this one's a little bit dirty. <clears throat> so, let's clean it off. <clears throat> At the bottom of the fish feeder, you've got this little cover that covers your battery compartment area, I've taken it off. The problem with this fish feeder is it's actually stopped ticking. So even if the battery the gears don't don't turn, that's the first sign. If you put it to your ear like a seashell and it's not ticking when the battery is in there, that means something's gone wrong. So um, let's have a look. So first of all, <coughs> you can loosen this little back compartment here. It's got these little clips, as you can see here. And these little clips just clip on the side. Onto these little flanges here, these ends. So all you need to do is lift them to the sides and it'll come off. Okay, I'll turn this around. <clears throat> now you'll see the gears line up here. I've actually already had a quick sneak peek just to see what's the main issue. And the main issue is this little gear here isn't turning. So if you take this gear out here, this one is free floating, so you can just take it out. If you look at it, it's just a little plastic gear with a magnet inside of it. And it pulses to an oscillating signal that gets generated by the squirrel over here. And if you look very carefully, you'll be able to see there's actually some water in this gear. So when it fell into the water, I shook it out as well, best I could. But there's still some water inside of this, so if you clean off the water... And put the gear back in. <coughs> oh, there's actually something stuck on the gear. Piece of salt by the looks of it. Because this is actually a salt water fish feeder. Yes, it looks clean. Put that back in there. Let's put the battery in to check. Here we go. <coughs> a little mark I've made on the gear just now. Shows us that the gear is actually spinning 180 degrees. And that's what we want, you guys. Needs to turn all the way, not just sit on one spot. So, because this fell into the salt water, there's bound to be other points of damage. 
So let's just have a look. So we'll take out this gear. And you can actually take out this whole section here. So be very careful when you do it. All right. And this is a standard quartz clock mechanism. So I've actually been considering actually getting the parts out of another clock to replace these if I ever had to. But these are pretty bulletproof and I've never had to do it. If we turn this around, you can see some other obvious problems that we've, we've developed. There's only a few, there's only two steel shafts in this whole mechanism and they are obviously not seawater rust proof so we're going to have to resolve that quickly so the easiest way to sort out the rust is with our trusty little scratchies from the kitchen and all we do is we just take this gear out of here this is the gear, that's the rust mechanism Let's see, will the gear come out? Well, just a little bit slowly. Okay, the rust is stopping it a bit. So what we'll do is we'll take care of some of this rust quickly. See the scratchy made a massive difference. So we'll just take the gear out now. Here it is. There you go. So the rust is preventing this gear from turning properly, and thus it won't feed. The, the food through properly. So what we do is we just take all the rust off of the scratchy there you go practically good as new-ish <laughs> So the other thing we can do is we could lubricate it slightly. These aren't normally lubricated, but I think in terms of fighting off further rust or anything like that, any residual water in some of the holes, we'll put a very thin layer of machine oil on, which will protect it. Now luckily I've got this Real X oil here. It's actually made for fishing reels and it's really space age stuff and I think this is just what we need to sort out this little axle. We'll just put a super thin form layer of it on there. There you go. And that's all we need in terms of lubrication. You see there isn't actually any drops visible except for a very faint layer. So what we'll do now is we'll put this gear back in here and deal. Make sure it joins the other gear properly at the bottom. There we go and spinning good as new let's work it a bit get that oil well established inside this little plastic shaft There we go. 
a little bit of rust that's come through the holder, so we'll take that off. Looking good. Okay. Now we're just going to dry that bit out properly. Make sure there's no water left on this. Okay. Now, next thing you can check is this little friend of us here. This is the coil and the circuit. They all look pretty clean. No obvious rust or defects. This is the little steel pin that goes around the coil. This I have seen rust. So there's still a thin layer of oil on my fingers from touching the oil bottle. So I'll just I'm just covering this with that. And that'll prevent it from rusting up in the future. So let's have a look. Yes, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. There's no obvious damage down there. So what we'll do. Just put this back in place. Make sure everything spins all right. This is a bit tough spinning, so there might be something that we need to look at at the top mechanism. So I'll take that out quickly. What I might do first is just put the mechanism back together so we don't lose track of where everything goes. So this little bit. See the back. And then our little steel band. This little hole here needs to line up with the side. So we'll put that in. We'll put a little gear back. Make sure it spins freely. Put a little mechanism back. Take this little gear. It's an odd little gear. It doesn't really have much holding it in place, so we'll slip this in here. There you go. So you can test it when you turn this. All the gears should move slowly. You can mark the gears so you can make sure they're all doing their thing. You can see they're all turning like they should now. So now we can put our closure back. Snap that in. 
snaps into place like that. Turn this guy around. To get to this mechanism here, we've got to lift this label off. This label is just taped to the to it, double sided tape. So use a sharp knife or pin. And slowly work the label off. Don't want to rush it and you don't want to tear it. Showing, showing you guys some ideas of how you can do it. Like changing a bicycle's tube. Here we go. When you put it back, you need to make sure that the 12 lines up with the zero, like that. So, that down. Okay. These are Phillips screwdriver. Oop, too big. Like a smaller Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so we've taken our timer indicator off. We've got our gear, a bit of rust on the spring. Let's take that off quickly. Looking good. Grab your Q-tip, a little bit of oil. Discover the rusty area of oil. We'll stop it. Okay. Now this pin that you see sticking up here is the pin we cleaned up earlier on. So we don't actually have to do much of that. That connects this big red gear basically. This, this is what turns the whole mechanism. So if you put your gear back on here. You have a look at this. This gear has got a fine ridge on it. That ridge fits in, in here. And that's what actually turns this, this big knob around. So, we'll just put this guy back. Use my little cloth. Make sure there's no oil residue anywhere where the label's supposed to go. Yes, a label. We've got to make sure that the zero lines up with the twelve. That was easy. question will it go so you grab your battery battery is back in there and you can see the red marks that we've made on the gears they are now moving so 
that's a pretty safe bit that your fish feeder is now working again. So that's all there is to fixing these guys. Let's complete this assembly. You theoretically, in my opinion, should be able to replace the complete clockwork with most other quartz mechanisms. If you buy yourself a cheap $5 alarm clock from your local store that says quartz on the back, it's basically got exactly the same movement. And there's a good chance you'll just be able to take those spears out and swap them out for these guys. So theoretically, these little devices, you could make them last a long time just by servicing, servicing them like this. There isn't much of else that can go wrong except for the clockwork. And that's my video on the repair of a fish mate. I hope you enjoyed it. And see you around. Cheers.